thank you guys for joining us for our webinar today. Uh, we're really excited to host with Forum One and um, Cascade Bicycle Club. And um, just wanna do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started and jump right in. Um, if you're listening from your computer, we suggest um, making sure that your mic and speaker audio options are all set up. We wanted to let you know that you'll be muted during the call, though we can answer any of the questions that you might have um, in the Q&A window. We aren't using chat this time around. And uh, we can take them as they come, and then definitely there will be time at the end of the presentation to uh, go over some of our questions. Uh, we'll, we'll have a post-webinar survey that'll come out to you, um, and it'll also have the uh, video recorded of this presentation for you to look at further. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the Drupal Association. I'll introduce myself. My name is Lauren Che. I work uh, in, in Portland for the Drupal Association as uh, the community outreach uh, coordinator. and um, you know, it's it's been a really exciting uh, time to be involved in the Drupal Association. Um, our mission is to foster and support the Drupal community so that we can collaborate and help innovate the project. There's so many ways that we can help the community. Uh, we host Drupal.org uh, and we're building a tech team to improve the site. We provide grants for the community members to fund the way that they grow and further the project, like starting new camps in different areas. We're running a multi-city roadshow, energizing and evangelizing Drupal. We also host Drupal Cons, which brings thousands of us together to work on the project and bond as a community. And we provide scholarships uh, for members around the globe to attend. So if you have any questions on that, please let us know um, offline and we can get you that information. And all of this is funded through our memberships, our DrupalCons and our supporting partners. So you can see uh, we also have some uh, community programs such as our Global Training Days, which is a really exciting new program that we're doing as well as these webinars to help um, help let you guys know what's going on in the community, what's hot, what's being talked about, and um, exciting things happening. Next slide, please. So upcoming events, we have Austin DrupalCon in 2014. We have our uh, Drupal Global Training Days, May 30th. And our next webinar, we invite you to attend um, Microsoft Presents Easy Drupal in the Cloud using Windows Azure. Next slide. And we just want to thank uh, Forum One for being our supporting partner. Without our partners, you know, we couldn't provide a lot of the services and programming that we offer. So thank you guys in advance for an amazing presentation. Next slide. Without further ado, I'll present our uh, introduce you guys to our presenters. We have Tim O'Connor with um, Cascade Bicycle Club, Bridget with Forum One. Stein with Forum One and Andrew with Forum One. Thank you guys for speaking today. Thanks, Lauren. So before we get started, a little about the two organizations. So Forum One, as Lauren mentioned, uh, we're a digital agency focused on driving progress on issues of societal importance, such as health, education, the environment, and uh, international development. <clears throat> we do everything from digital strategy to branding, interactive design for web and mobile, accessibility and usability engineering. Um, you can see some case studies at the link below. Uh, we're also going to be tweeting from this webinar at hashtag F1 uh, webinar, uh, if you want to check that out. Uh, and Tim. Thanks, Bridget. My name's Tim. I'm the tech manager at Cascade Bicycle Club. Just tell you a little bit about us. We're a nonprofit focused on creating a better community through bicycling. Uh, we have uh, many different programs. Uh, we do over 2,000 free daily rides around the greater Puget Sound area. We do 15 paid events that fund a lot of our nonprofit activities. We have uh, advocacy or a lobbying effort to help uh, get safe streets in place in the greater Puget Sound area. And uh, a pretty comprehensive education department that uh, through its efforts teaches up to 18,000 kids a year how to ride safely, put their helmets on, uh, and 
uh, grow up in a healthy community here in the Puget Sound. Uh, we're about 40 years old. We have around 60,000 supporters, uh, 50,000, excuse me, 15,000 paying members who help fund a lot of the nonprofit activities we uh, put together. Uh, around 900 volunteers really help us and the 40 staff members put on these great events or make a big difference in different communities around the greater Seattle area. Um, our vision is to create a better community through bicycling and over the years, 40 of them, uh, we've come up with a number of programs. Uh, we do just about everything you can do on a bicycle to uh, make a better community. And that means that over time we grew to have 12 different websites for our various programs. Uh, the user experience was quite disorienting and we did need one website with one login. Uh, we were very lucky to find Forum One Communications in 2013 uh, to launch this pretty massive web rebuild. Let me just go over the scope of that. So we had Drupal 6. We need to upgrade that all to Drupal 7. We need to combine eight websites and four databases uh, so people didn't have to remember four logins uh, just to access the different aspects of Cascade Bicycle Club. Uh, we use Civi CRM, which is a free CRM system that we had a lot of custom code invested in. Uh, that needed to be upgraded significantly, and uh, so did Ubercart, our e-commerce uh, solution. Uh, and because we're combining so many websites and databases, uh, a lot of design and thinking hard about how users navigate the site and how they find us, not just a organizational chart for the higher level menu, but what they're looking to do when they come to our website. So that's where Forum One also helps us out quite a bit. Uh, now I want to pass it on to Sten from Forum One to talk about the technical challenges. Cool. Hey everyone. So we had a number of technical challenges during the project that I wanted to talk about. The first challenge was technical debt. Cascade's website had a lot of it in the form of critically important custom code that served as the site's glue, syncing data between Drupal, Ubercart, and Civi CRM. That custom code was in 15 different custom modules comprised of about 15,000 lines of insufficiently commented and uh, pretty difficult to understand code. And that custom code contained large amounts of undocumented business logic. Maintaining that code, fixing bugs and adding features was proving quite expensive. So one of the key project goals was reducing the cost of maintaining that code. Our initial approach to solving this problem was to essentially rebuild the system, completely overhaul the bike, so to speak, by replacing Ubercart with the more widely used Drupal Commerce, replacing as many of the custom modules and business logic as we could with contributed modules like rules, and then carefully refactoring and, re and documenting any remaining custom modules still necessary. But as we explored the level of effort necessary to understand and then re-implement the business logic contained in the custom modules, we realized the task was going to be too big for the scope of the project. So instead of swapping out Ubercart and re-implementing large swaths of the custom code, uh, we determined the less risky option was to simply upgrade all the components as is and get them working in Drupal 7. Um, and huge credit to Cascade for rolling with uh, what was a pretty major architectural or change to the architectural approach um, uh, shortly after the project started. So we upgraded Ubercart, ported all of the custom modules to Drupal 7, reformatted the code, added comments to improve code readability, and as time allowed, started the task of refactoring some of those custom modules. So lessons learned. Uh, a key lesson for us was that porting or upgrading custom code to a new Drupal version is often simpler and less risky than trying to replace or rebuild them, particularly when the custom code contains a lot of complex undocumented business logic. A side benefit of choosing to port the code rather than completely rebuild or rewrite um, was that it gave us the chance to clean the code up, refactor a little bit, and better document the code, uh, all of which I think will help make it easier down the road uh, when Cascade decides to um, rebuild or refactor those modules. Lastly, the coder module was pretty helpful. Uh, it can help you automate the task of porting your modules by identifying the Drupal 6 specific syntax in your code and suggesting Drupal 7 equivalents, assuring you don't miss anything. 
So our next challenge resulted from starting a complex platform upgrade and redesign simultaneously. We quickly discovered it was like trying to juggle and ride a bike at the same time. It's possible, but it can make both tasks more difficult. Uh, just as a reminder, we started out upgrading Drupal, uh, Ubercart, Civi CRM, and porting those 15 custom modules to Drupal 7. And at the same time, we started the redesign on the information architecture, uh, building a new custom responsive theme, overhauling the page layout and management, uh, and adding a number of other new features in the backlog. Uh, we quickly hit snags uh, with this simultaneous approach, however. Uh, a number of the redesign decisions proved dependent on the result of the upgrade. Uh, for example, had we switched to Drupal Commerce, we would have needed to design new order workflows. Uh, another issue was the tech team's attention was split between figuring out the rather complex upgrade to Drupal 7 and advising and providing estimates to the designers and the IAs on the time. Uh, so there was a, some inefficiency in the task switching there. And lastly, the upgrade of custom code was really critical. It had to be done. But there were a number of unknowns around it, and we didn't know how long it would take as a result. And that made it difficult to determine how much budget would be available for the redesign and prioritize the redesign tasks accordingly. <coughs> Excuse me. So we hit the pause button on the redesign uh, and decided to focus 100% on the upgrade until it was complete. We ended up calling that upgrade period our big Uber sprint to, <laughs> to get all of Drupal, uh, the Uber card, CVCRM, and the 15 custom modules upgraded. By doing that, it allowed us to put the most critical and riskiest part of the project behind us and then turn our attention to the redesign. In, si in hindsight, I would take it even a step further and not just do the upgrade tasks first, but launch the site after the upgrade, i.e. push the upgrade live before beginning the redesign, as this would simplify the launch and deployment process um, for both parts of the project. Uh, in our case, since the steps to execute the upgrade of Cascade site to Drupal 7 were quite time consuming, there were over 300 mostly manual steps that took over eight hours to complete. Uh, we were only able to fully simulate and test the upgrade and launch of the redesign twice before the actual launch day. Our third challenge was how to stage all the new content Cascade was preparing for launch. Cascade had hundreds of pa new pages that needed to be published on launch day, all within a new information architecture and design. And Cascade needed to create this content ahead of time so we could test it with the new code and features we were developing, um, as well as we needed to practice deploying it. So in addition to the dev and staging servers we used for testing new code and features, we spun up a content staging server for Cascade to use to write new content and build out the new menu structure of the site. We periodically deployed that new content to the dev and staging servers using a migration solution built on top of the migrate and migrate Drupal to Drupal modules. Uh, really great packages for migrating your data uh, either from other systems that are not Drupal into Drupal or from one Drupal site to another. Having the separate content staging server ensured we didn't accidentally break or erase Cascade's new content with untested code changes. And the migrate-based deployment allowed us to repeatedly simulate the deploying of that new content on launch day and iron out bugs before the actual launch. One technical tip we wanted to pass on uh, is around migrating overridden panelizer settings on nodes. Cascade's new Drupal 7 site and content make heavy use of panelizer. Um, unfortunately, panelizer doesn't support migrate out of the box, um, but we discovered that it isn't uh, too difficult to implement. Uh, so this is more for the technical folks out in the audience, but uh, as you're building out your migration or migrate-based migration solution, uh, if you extend the prepare method on your node migration, uh, you can basically just load the source node and copy the panelizer property on that node to the destination node entity about to be saved. And that will bring over uh, all of the panelizer settings and content for that node. Hey, uh, this is Andrew. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, the content display on the website and some of the modules that we used. <clears throat> A big part of this redesign was uh, so that 
we could give Cascade better ways to provide content to their users. And their users are a very diverse group. They've got, you know, people interested in getting into cycling, they've got enthusiast cyclists, and they've got people who are interested in advocacy. So um, these are some pretty common modules, but we were able to leverage them to really give Cascade what they needed uh, to provide um, a complicated hierarchy of content and also display related content. So what we're looking at here is sort of a category page under major rides, and we're using flexible panel panes to show underlying pages, uh, and it really invites users to get into the content and drags them into the deeper level pages where it's more relevant to that specific user. Uh, and this is just a little more of that. Uh, for an event page, um, we use Panelizer so that if you uh, put in a location, you'll get a map on the sidebar. Uh, and you're also seeing a little bit more of the entity references um, in the event details here. Those are actually other pages that are referenced here. So now let's talk about performance. So we've added all these bells and whistles, and we wanted to make sure that we could get up the hill at the end of the day. Uh, this has been a problem for Cascade in the past, uh, as most of their traffic to their website comes in uh, mid-January and early February. That's when they open up their ticket sales to uh, their registered and unregistered members and really kind of sell out most of the events for the year. Uh, so they really rely on this period, and their website really can't go down. Uh, we use Load Impact, uh, which is a tool that allows you to simulate hundreds of concurrent users. Um, gives you a bunch of parameters on how you want to schedule and run your test. Uh, but basically, we scripted out a shopping workflow where a user would buy a, uh, a membership and an event ticket. And we just kind of ran that over and over again to see what kind of performance we could get out of it. Uh, at the end of this chart here, you'll see blue line sort of thrashing around, and that's not good because that's um, how long it takes for one pass to complete. And when you see it jump around like that, uh, we started to see issues with the server of um, failed completion. But after tuning the server and the database, we were able to get a lot more performance out of it. Um, one big lesson learned was uh, we had to bump up the server size from what we were using in the previous year. Uh, fortunately, we are using Amazon Web Services, and that allowed us to do that pretty seamlessly. So the takeaways here, uh, start early. We launched the site in November, and that gave us plenty of time to make some improvements. Uh, there's always more room for performance improvements, but we, we got through the site launch and were able to sell the tickets. Uh, another big thing is don't assume that uh, software upgrades will lead to performance improvement. Uh, we were under the assumption that the Civi upgrade, the Ubercart upgrade, and the Drupal 7 upgrade would speed things up, but that turned out to not be the case. Uh, another good tip for testing is know what your target is and question if that's really matching your real performance. Uh, we kind of struggled a little bit to pin down what we wanted to test. But in the end, I think uh, we did a pretty accurate job of matching what real-world performance we needed to hit. So I'm turning this over for Bridget for a bit more on our collaboration. So let's go back to the title of this webinar. Um, it's writing tandem with your client. So when two organizations work together on a project, um, it typically isn't what you picture on a, a riding a tandem bike where you're on the same frame, you're going clearly the same direction easily. It's a little bit more like this. There's a lot more moving parts, especially in a project like this where you're overhauling a business critical site with a lot of disparate and very passionate users um, uh, under budget constraints with a lot of ambiguity. We also had a lot of critical staff turnover during this project, so it required a lot of coordination. So building a close relationship between Forum 1 and Cascade wasn't a luxury. It was really critical to this project's success. So I'm going to dive a little bit into what we did to build that. Um, first, we worked as much as we could as one team. One of the concrete steps we took to make that happen was we co-located a lot. Um, Tim and Alan from Cascade, and uh, Cascade's communication lead for the project came out to form one offices, especially early on in the project when we were defining 
what the IA and the workflows were going to be on the site. And um, we, uh, Andrew, Sten, I, and some other folks from Form 1 went to Cascade's office, especially towards the end of the project. We were there uh, two days a week, um, all day. And that really got us um, immediate direct feedback, a much deeper understanding of Cascade uh, as an organization, and resiliency through those staff transitions I mentioned. Uh, and it also made sure that Cascade got a greater visibility into the Form 1 process on the project. Um, it kept us all working together very clearly. So this uh, picture I'm showing you is from the release day, which was at Cascade's office. As Sten mentioned, it took over eight hours just to do the, um, the upgrades and deploy the code. Uh, from left to right here, you can see Leah, who's testing and updating content. Kim, who is testing and providing business logic expertise, feedback on how things are working. Uh, me doing some testing, handling communications with some remote folks involved in the release. Um, Alan and Chris, and then Andrew at the far right, who are doing technical support, bug fixes, uh, tweaks as needed. Sten, who's applying and driving the release. And Tim on the right, who's doing everything under the sun, uh, coordinating with other stakeholders at Cascade. And it really didn't matter that about half these folks are from Cascade and half were from Forum 1. Having everyone in that same room meant that we could detect and respond to problems immediately. We could lift the release steps on the board and cross them off as we walked through them. We could diagram issues and diagram the, the servers and the URL names that we needed to apply when and how those were going to work during the release. Um, this type of coordination uh, on site made a big difference. And it, was true during the development process as well. We uh, want, in terms of co-locating, we didn't just co-locate physically. One of the tools we use um, to work when, with remote folks within Form 1 is uh, chat rooms. This is HipChat, for example. And um, uh, we had Tim and Alan, as I mentioned, in the same project chat room with the tech team because it's so much more efficient when Tim can just ping the whole tech team directly with an urgent bug, um, or when there's critical questions coming up, or Andrew and Sten can ask Tim directly for clarifications on requirements. It's a luxury we could afford because Tim and Alan are both very tech savvy, super reasonable, and this just helped a lot with the efficiency of the project. This also paired well with another uh, unique collaboration that we had on this project, which actually came out of a challenge. Um, one item in the original scope, which was this daily rides functionality, uh, turned out to be much, much bigger than we estimated once we dug into it. it was, there was no way it was going to fit into scope once we really understood the complexity and the size of this, this feature set. But uh, Sven turned this actually into a great opportunity. Uh, because Cascade had the goal to be more self-sufficient, and Alan, who I've mentioned from Cascade, wanted to develop some Drupal expertise himself. So Cascade lent Alan to the, the project team to develop the daily ride functionality under Sten's guidance. He came and worked from the Form 1 office one day a week and really dug into building out this whole feature set, which meant that Cascade built up this really hands-on uh, expertise, technical expertise with the site. Um, Form 1 got better understanding of Cascade, and we got more features built in time for the release. Sorry, that's, that's Alan right there, and that's the, the daily rides functionality that got built out. And uh, don't underestimate also what getting out and experiencing your client's business can do. Uh, for this, this was natural and actually a really great perk of the project. Uh, this is a picture from right in the STP. Um, Andrew, Sten, I, and uh, Nampo from Form 1 all went and rode on this, which is the biggest uh, Cascade event population-wise of the year. And it, I mean, we're bike enthusiasts already, so it's a real treat to feel like an insider. But it also helps to understand um, at, at a much more concrete level what Cascade does, who they serve. Um, and that's the point of all of this, uh, the helping better serve cyclists. So in the end, what this project did is go from this amalgam of systems on different web properties, messy custom code, uh, multiple databases, to this responsive, coherent Drupal 7 site, which was very well received. 
this is a comment from the Seattle Bike blog, uh, which is not related to Cascade, saying that the new website is super fancy, you can actually find stuff. And uh, as Andrew mentioned, there are those peaks a couple days during the year when the site just gets hammered. Uh, at the peak, we saw uh, over a thousand simultaneous active users um, and processed 156 orders in six minutes. And while the site slowed down, because we tested it and made those improvements, tweaks to the server size, et cetera, it held up. And in the end, what all of that means is that Cascade now has a stronger platform for re reaching the bicyclists that they support, teach, and advocate for. So more kids can grow up biking in a safe, supportive city. Thanks. Any questions? Great, thanks guys for um, asking or participating in this. Um, do we have any questions from anyone? I saw a comment. Uh, I see one in there from uh, Yannick. It says, uh, you mentioned using the Migrate D2D module to help with migrating content. How did you handle migrating views? Did you have to recreate those from scratch? That's a great question. Um, yeah, so we rebuilt, they actually, their initial site did not have that many views on it, very few. Um, and in the redesign of the website, the content and specifically the content listings changed enough to where we rebuilt the views that we needed from scratch. So we did not migrate views. Uh, and the migrate module does not support uh, migrating views or other kinds of structural content within Drupal. It's primarily for migrating uh, non-structural content like nodes, users, taxonomies. Does that, does that answer your question? Uh, great. Thanks, Andrew. Um, as a reminder to you folks, if you see the uh, control panel on the side of your screen, you can ask questions right through that box. And our uh, team is waiting to answer them. Um, Sten, I wonder if you could go into a little more detail on uh, what happened during the Uber Sprint, um, what that kind of broke down to? Sure. That's Oh, wow. That's a great question. So uh, the Uber Sprint, there were three well, four basically large projects in it, or pieces to it. Uh, upgrading Drupal, upgrading Civi CRM, uh, upgrading Ubercard, and then upgrading the 15 modules. And so we started first with Drupal. Uh, it was actually, sorry, Drupal and Ubercard, uh, and seeing if we could upgrade those. So we used Drupal's built-in update.php functionality, and uh, we basically spun up a test environment. And uh, I believe on the first attempt, we were able to successfully update uh, both Drupal and Ubercart and bring all the data over. Uh, I think we did run into a few snags. Like there are something like 50,000 uh, users, Drupal user accounts or 60,000 user accounts. And I forget how many total orders, but a lot. And that's one of the reasons why the upgrade process took eight hours, because it took just Drupal and Ubercart that long to uh, work through converting all of the users and all of the old orders. Um, but we were able to take care of the Drupal and Ubercart upgrades fairly quickly. Then we turned to the CVCRM upgrade. That was a little bit hairier, because the older version of CVCRM that they had uh, was 3.15. It was like quite old, and it actually was, it wasn't set up quite correctly. It looked like it had, uh, it couldn't be directly upgraded. So that was another reason why we had a lot of manual steps, was we had to make a number of manual database changes during the upgrade process. Uh, it, that was quite a pain. Um, but once we figured out the Civi CRM upgrade, then the, the remaining big unknown was figuring out all of the custom uh, the, uh, sorry, upgrading all of the custom modules. And the approach we took there was Andrew and I, and that really constituted the bulk of the Uber Sprint. Um, and we created a backlog 
had all the custom modules in there, and Andrew and I locked ourselves in a room, put them up on a whiteboard, and divvied them up and went through them one by one. And um, our approach was uh, we knew the rough functionality that each module was responsible for, and so we had kind of a list of basic test cases uh, that we used to uh, validate whether our porting efforts were working. Uh, so we just went through them one by one, converted the syntax to Drupal 7 as best we could, uh, ran through tests to see if it was working um, as best we could, and if things looked good, then we turned it over to Cascade, who then developed a much more detailed testing script of workflows. Uh, and they, sorry, by script, I mean basically a list of test cases to manually run through and see if things were working as they should. Um, and then they would file bugs and we would respond to them. But it was basically uh, just go through each custom module one by one and get it working in Drupal 7. Does, does that answer your question about the basic workflow? Great, thanks, Ben. That was, that was awesome. Um, uh, another question that came in here: um, What was the what was the rough? Uh, let's see, what was the rough project budget? Did you have to adjust during the project? What was the budgeting process like? Um, how do you want to? How would you like to answer that? You may not want to um, give any specific numbers, but just kind of talk about how the how the process moved along. That is Tim from Cascade. I'll answer that one. Uh, so we, we had a fixed budget and uh, it was a pretty reasonable sum or a sizable sum. And as we went through the project and did a pretty deep discovery, uh, scope uh, increased once we found out the daily rides program required a lot more work. Uh, but then we had someone inside from Cascade, Allen, come in to tackle a lot of that work. Uh, as the project went on, we found out that Drupal Commerce wasn't going to work. We were going to have to use Ubercart still. Uh, some of the time that we spent uh, going towards the Drupal Commerce uh, solution meant that we couldn't spend it doing other things. So we were all really ruthless as a team to focus on the minimum viable product, what we needed at its core to have a highly functioning e-commerce website where 80% of our revenue comes through. So the Form 1 team in Cascade had to make some tough decisions about what was going to be in scope or not. But at the end of the day, we got everything needed, uh, we got everything that we'd done, uh, we got everything that we needed done and uh, ended up in a great result. Excellent. Thanks. Um, here's another question from Joshua. Uh, what was the major hurdle preventing you from going to Drupal Commerce? Uh, this is Stan, I can tackle that one. Um, so there were a couple of big hurdles. The, I would say the number one hurdle was, well actually there were two. One was the volume of custom code. Uh, Cascade's website was built quite a while ago and a lot of that custom code was the glue syncing data and connecting um, Ubercart with City CRM, uh, Drupal, and then also uh, web form. Uh, web form was used to collect a bunch of event specific information for each participant that registered. For example, someone signing up for a long bike ride from Seattle to Portland, we needed to know like what t-shirt size we wanted. Um, and so that information was collected inside of web form, but then, uh, this may be too much detail, but uh, there was custom code in there that uh, added that information into CV CRM reports. Um, so there was just a ton of really complex undocumented logic that was tightly intertwined with Ubercart and CVCRM. And so switching to Drupal Commerce, we realized would, uh, it would have meant untangling all that code, teasing out all that undocumented business logic. And so there was a, there was a tremendous amount of risk there uh, that we didn't have time to, to absorb. Um, the other challenge with going, the other challenge that we faced with um, potentially switching to Drupal Commerce was um, it would have meant uh, additional UI work for designing new workflows and uh, retraining Cascade staff on managing the back end um, orders, and order fulfillment, et cetera.
Great, thank you. Um, here's another question that came in. Uh, do you know of a way to migrate views? A way to migrate? So uh, that's a good question. I'm assuming that's from a Drup one Drupal site to another Drupal site? Uh, I don't have that information, but go ahead and answer both. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, if you're, yeah, if you're migrating views from one Drupal site to another, views actually has uh, an ability, you can export views um, from within the views administrative interface. So if you're on Drupal 7 and you go to structure views and then select the view that you would like to move to another site, uh, one of the tabs available to you is export. Uh, and then you can copy the code and then on the destination site, uh, if you go into structure and views and select import, you can then paste that code in and import the view. Uh, another option is um, using features. Uh, the features module is a great way to capture structural content in Drupal, for example, views or panels pages or context into module code. Um, and then you can move that module or feature that you've created between sites. Uh, that's another great way to move structural content like views around. So let, let me know if that answers your question or if you had something different in mind. Okay, great. Uh, and here's a question from Lori. What role did Civi CRM play in the new site? Um, so the Civi CRM is there. Oh, that's a great question. So um, Civi CRM is the database um, and Tim might jump in here if, if I don't, uh, I think he's got a better handle on it than I do, but it captures all of Cascade's engagement with all of their membership. Um, the history of all their event participation, uh, the history of all donations they've made, um, the relationships between their members, so like who's in, who's in what family, uh, what classes they've participated in, so it's a great way for Cascade to dive in and, and really understand their membership. Okay. Uh, anything to add there? Um. No. Uh, Sten captured it well. It's our customer relationship management system where we try to track everything we can about the 60,000 uh, users that use our website, participate in our bicycle rides, or donate for the cause, uh, take action uh, politically to write their legislator to uh, advocate for safer streets. Uh, we try to keep everything in there so we can continue to build upon these relationships we have been for 40 years. Sure, that's that's where all of your all of your member intelligence is. So that's super important. Um, so another question that came in here: uh, What project management uh, issue tracking tools did you use for this project? Uh, this is Bridget. We primarily use Redmine. Um, which, uh, like any project management system, is uh, the worst project management system out there, unlike uh, other than all the others. Um, to use to actually a quote from somebody with uh, Redmine. I, th I think it's Churchill. Oh, Trello. <laughs> I can't correct it. We use Trello for this project. Sorry. Thank you, Sten, for correcting me. Um, we use Trello for uh, pro for task tracking, for bug tracking, for um, uh, for uh, tracking uh, everything. Augmented, of course, with meetings and, and email and, uh, as you saw, a hip chat, the chat room. Um, and actually, that worked out really well because it started off as a, we started off using that just for the project and it evolved quite a bit over the course of the project um, so that, and it ended up now in this, this backlog tool that, that Tim now owns and has customized to track incoming issues from a variety of different people the, uh, whether their content changes or uh, or bugs or feature improvements, prioritize them, track them through the, the process, uh, how they've been QA'd, stuff like that. Yeah, Trello was such an easy to learn how to use tool that we took a lot of our staff that were maybe not the most technical, but were able to use the features it had to create their own bugs, their own issues, and we had a lot of our staff being able to help me track bugs and priorities and reprioritize what was the most important thing to fix next. And uh, we took the opportunity to build it into something that we use still today to track uh, technical issues on our web properties. 
one really handy tip um, uh, for using Trello for managing Scrum projects. There's a great Google Chrome extension called uh, Scrum for Trello, which allows you to, through the UI, add assign story points to cards on your Trello board, and then it will tell you like how many total story points you have in any one column. Uh, so it, it it adds some Scrum features to Trello for you. Great, that's a good tip. Um, a couple questions here on uh, the CRM. Any tips for handling contact contact management and syncing them effectively between Drupal and CVCRM? Did you have to do a lot of cleanup of contacts as you upgraded everything? Do you have any tips on cleaning up contacts before, during, or after an upgrade like this? Oof, they stayed the same as far as I know. Yeah, they, uh, they stayed the same. We enter uh, a fraction of the people who maybe donate at our bike to work breakfast into our CVCRM system that weren't necessarily front end web users of the Drupal website. Uh, but everyone that had created a user account on the Drupal website had automatically uh, created for themselves a Civi contact record. So Civi had a few more 1,000 people in it than Drupal did, but we kept it straight across the board. We didn't do any cleaning up or uh, removing or adding. One thing I just, uh, just remembered is that one thing we did struggle with before the project and um, uh, that I think Cascade has a process in place for is dealing with duplicate users. And duplicates arise for a number of reasons, but um, uh, either because at different points in time when they have contact with Cascade, maybe they, they misspell their name or they don't report their birthday one time and do report it later, and so the records don't necessarily get matched up within CVCRM. One of the ways we tried to mitigate the creation of new du duplicate records in CVCRM this time was by during the user registration process we require users to enter their first name, their last name, and their birthday and uh, we treat that as a, a unique person or contact. Um, and so if someone tries to register on the site even if they've already registered before, if they enter in a, you know, the name and birthday that already exists in the system, uh, CVCRM will not create a new record for them. It will attach them to the existing record. Great. Um, another question about CVCRM. What element of CVCRM are you using for the advocacy aspect um, for contacting legislators? Uh, well, we track some of those uh, interactions on the advocacy level uh, for the community and our legislators. Uh, we use a separate tool called Civi CRM, or excuse me, <laughs> with, called Salsa, uh, salsalabs.org, I think. And it's a email platform like MailChimp that will write customized letters to legislators based on the user's zip code to find it in the right district. Uh, and that does have a uh, module to tie in with Civi, but we didn't go so far as to tie Salsa and Civi as closely together as we could have. Gotcha. Great. And uh, you may have already answered this question with some of the other ones, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, was the Civi CRM database shared with Drupal, and did that make the upgrade easier or harder? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so the CVCRM tables were stored inside of the Drupal database. So they were all inside, both the Drupal tables and the CVCRM tables were all in one database. Um, and to your question of did it make it easier or harder, that's a really good question. Um, I, ideally, I wanted to split the two, but a lot of the custom code and some of the custom reporting in the system uh, it, uh, uh, was built out in a way that it required all of the tables to be in the same database. Um, so I, yeah, and I, we haven't done any further investigation into that. So that's, um, so like, what's the most ideal setup? But I believe, if I remember right, on City CRM's website, they do encourage you to have. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I, I think they encourage you to have them in separate databases. So, in the future, that is something that we would like to look into. 
Excellent. Thanks, Jen. Um, so I've come to the end of the questions today. Um, if anybody has any additional questions, feel free to contact our uh, presenters. Um, you can uh, contact us through the Forum One website, uh, and you can also find uh, our presenter information on uh, the website, profiles for all of our great speakers today. Um, you'll also uh, notice that we have put up the link to our SlideShare and YouTube channels, so we'll make things available on those channels as well. And um, the Drupal Association is also making the recording available on their website. Um, so I'm going to hand it back over to Lauren at this time, and she's going to wrap things up and uh, thank everybody for attending. And on behalf of Forum One and Cascade, thank you so much, everybody, for attending and having such excellent questions. You've really made this a, a wonderful event. So thank you for being so so involved and uh, participatory. Uh, Lauren. Thank you. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Oh, just before we move on, I don't know if we actually mentioned the URL for Cascade's website. It's cascade.org. So if you want to check out the website itself, it's at cascade.org. Thank you. Sorry, Lauren. Go ahead. No, that's great. Um, if you can change it to the next slide. I, I wanted to thank uh, Cascade and uh, Form One for, for joining us. It was a really fantastic subject and uh, really innovative and engaging for um, someone new to the Drupal community and someone I'm sure that's been very engaged. So thank you guys for putting together such a great presentation. Um, I just wanted to end with a little bit of a reminder that, you know, helping helping us fund more scholarships, grants, servers, all of the programs that help. Um, you can become an organization member, an individual member, um, and the link is down at the bottom. Um, it always helps support the program and the project, and we really appreciate that. Next slide, please. And just a reminder again, if you missed it at the beginning, um, our upcoming events, we have Drupal.